I will give floor to next speaker, uh, Karina Stirmanti, my colleague from Virac, uh, with uh, e-poster observations of OH masers in 1.6 gigahertz frequency band using the Isbena at T32 radio telescope. So floor is yours. You have 10 minutes for presentation. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me and can you yes, see me? Yes, perfectly. And we see your poster as well. Okay, okay. I will start. Hello everyone, I'm Karina Stirmanta and today I will try to introduce you about our activities related to observations of OH masers um, using our Irben RT32 radio telescope and using 1.6 GHz receiver system. Um, I would like to say that it is just the one activity under the project uh, calling complex investigation of the small bodies in the solar system. And at the moment, uh, or in this activity, we are trying to calculate or estimate uh, the sensitivity level of our RT32 uh, radio telescope uh, receiving system, L-band receiving system. And uh, the main goal is to detect OH measures on comets, uh, uh, which I would like to say is very, very weak. Um, typical comets, uh, OH measures on comets are uh, around flux density are around uh, 0. Point, or I would say 40 millijohns scale, but uh, if we are lucky, there are bright comets and the uh, flux density can be around 0. Uh, 0. 0.5 jan scale. And uh, it is possible detectable. And uh, let's start with our instrument. Um, I would say I know that you already heard about our receiving systems, and uh, that's why I will just point to the L-band receiving system, which we are, we are using in these activities, in these observations related to, to OH measures and uh, detection. And this L-band receiving system is uh, built by our engineers uh, two years ago. And, uh, it is a hot one, not cryogenic, and that's why sensitivity, uh, this SEFT is around six, uh, 650 to um, 900 in Janskis, uh, depending on elevation of antenna. Yeah, but before we started our observations, we did calculations or est estimations. Is it, uh, um, is it possible to detect uh, weak measures, OH measures, using our um, RT32 and our 1.6 gigahertz receiver. And um, the calculations show us that it is possible, but the integration time need to be a large. And uh, but uh, we, we, we are positively, and we tried to detect uh, some of comets as well, but we started with uh, Intel sterile OH maser detection. Uh, why? Um, because comets are, <laughs> um, it's not so stable. It's, um, it, it can be bright um, if, it, uh, if it is moving to, to the sun, but the brightness is fading very fast after the sun. Uh, and that's what uh, we choose several uh, OH measures from the install, uh, installer OH measures. And um, I would like to say that, um, uh, as you maybe already know, that um, uh, hyper, uh, OH, uh, for OH measure detection, there, is, uh, there are four hyperfine uh, lines uh, in 1.6 gigahertz, as you can see here. Um, but only two of them, uh, 1.665 and 1.667, uh, are potential for OH measure detection because other ones is uh, quite noisy um, because of satellite communications and RFI. And that we uh, choose several uh, Intel sterile OH measures, uh, which flux density were around uh, 0 0.5 to 3 Jansky, um, to try to um, test our methods, our recording methods, our processing methods, and uh, trying to uh, find out the sensitivity level in this 1.6 gigahertz. Um, overall, there were 150 hours approximately uh, data set, uh, which is uh, quite large, <laughs> several hundreds of terabytes. 
Uh, but uh, there I can show you some of the results. It is just a sum uh, of the results. And um, the first one is variable star LMI, uh, typical uh, spectra with two pikes. And here with uh, flux density three Jansky, and the second one is 1.7. And we got the, this detection uh, at the first of our observation. And that's why we, uh, we choose it, uh, this object as a calibration object uh, for other observations as well. And uh, yeah, and uh, overall, we got a large data set, approximately 50 hours data set. And uh, with large integration, we got uh, this nose level below or 0 0.1 Jansky, which is quite good, but the integration time need to be large. And the second one, uh, or I would say in this uh, poster, the second one is this spectrum, uh, which is OH uh, star. Um, um, as you can see, there is a spectrum with two components here with the first one, 1.5 Jansky around. And the second one is this uh, complex uh, component where there is three pikes. And here, as you can see, um, the limit is around uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Um, but uh, I, I will tell you about a little bit later that uh, our receiver is not so stable that you can see that um, this uh, noise level is uh, below zero uh, flux density here. Uh, but for this case, uh, 18 hours uh, were a data set and um, the noise level below 0 0.4. And um, for the observations, we used uh, our program at uh, software defined radio, USRP uh, spectrometer. Uh, for noise calibration, we use it uh, frequency switching, um, uh, algorithm by Winkle. And uh, for data processing, we are transform, uh, also wavelet transfers were used in several cases and uh, some uh, specific data windowing. And overall, um, yes, uh, uh, theoretically we can detect uh, OH masers and comets, uh, but practically uh, with this system uh, using this 1.6 gigahertz receiver, I think it's not so promising. Uh, that means it is necessary for new receiving system, a uh, cryogenic one. And uh, maybe already you already heard that uh, we have a plan to develop it. Uh, and I think, that, uh, as I heard, the development process will start next year. Um, this new receiving system, uh, 1.6 uh, gigahertz receiving system, will be three times better. Sensitivity will be three times better than this one, what we use it before. Uh, but uh, till that moment, uh, we will continue the work by data processing. Uh, for example, to use more effective data processing tools, um, uh, we are studying the Cartwheel uh, Lowy transformation, uh, which is quite computer consuming, uh, but we have to high performance computers uh, with overall, overall 800 uh, cores uh, uh, at WIRAC site. Uh, and of course, it is necessary to um, um, detect and uh, remove the RFI as well, because 1.6 gigahertz frequency band is quite noisy. Um, I would say it's all from my side. <laughs> and, uh, if you have any questions, please ask me. Yeah. Uh, thanks you a lot. Uh, questions to Karina? No questions. No, it was quite clear and a very nice talk. <laughs> Even more than five minutes, but I think everyone enjoyed it.